Welcome to the InDesign Getting Started series. Adobe InDesign is the industry standard publishing app that lets you design and publish high quality documents across a full spectrum of digital and print media. When you start a new project in InDesign, there are a lot of ways to begin. You can create a new document from scratch, start from a template, and a lot more. In this video, you'll start a new project by creating a new document. With the latest version of InDesign CC open, you'll see this start screen, which shows when there are no documents open. In the start screen, you can open existing files, create new files, and whether the start screen is showing or not, you can always go to the file menu at the top of the screen to open existing documents or create a new document. To start a new document from scratch, choose File, New, Document. The new document dialog box appears. Yours may look a little different than what you see here, and that's okay. To start with, you choose a preset option like print, web, or mobile, depending on the type of document you're creating. You'll create a document for a brochure that's meant to be saved as a PDF and printed later on. So click print to show a series of presets for a print document. By choosing the print preset, you're setting several options to start with, like color used and the unit set. After you choose a preset like print, there are a lot of preset sizes to begin with when you start a new document in InDesign. You can even click View All Presets so you can see more. Select Tabloid to set the page size. And know that if you choose a preset size like Tabloid, you can always change the size and all the other options later on after the document has been created. There are also a series of templates found in the New Document dialog box available from Adobe Stock. These templates can be a great way to learn how InDesign projects are built, and they can also be used as a way to jumpstart a project for a client, for instance. On the right side of this dialog box, you'll see a series of options you can set. Most of the time, you won't have to set all these options, but let's look at the options you'll set most. Click to highlight the name and change it to brochure. You don't really have to change the name here, but when you save the document later, this name will become the name of the file. Click Picas, and from the menu, choose Inches. These are called the document units. Later, when you want to measure something or look at a ruler, this is the measurement unit you'll see. You can customize the width and height of a document if you want to. You can also change the orientation by clicking one of these options. Deselect the Facing Pages option. A facing page document is something like a magazine or a book where pages can be arranged in spreads. This document will be a flyer, so it will only be a single page, which means facing pages does not need to be selected to start. You can also start with a number of pages, but you can do that after the document is created as well. There are a lot of other options you can set to fine-tune the document before you get started. You'll definitely become more familiar with these options the more you work in InDesign. For now, click Create to create the new document and open it in InDesign. Once the new document is open in InDesign, you can always change the document settings you first set by choosing File, Document Setup. To change the size of the initial page, you can choose a preset page size from this menu or even enter custom values here. You can change the orientation and do a lot more. Click Cancel to close this dialog box. Creating new documents in InDesign will definitely be something you do a lot. And there are a lot of options to explore when you set up a brand new document like you saw. But when getting started in InDesign, you can keep it simple and know that you can edit those document settings, like the page size later on, the more familiar you become with them. Save this document by choosing File, Save. Choose a place to save the document and make sure that InDesign document is selected for the format. Notice the name of the file, its brochure, and click Save. In Adobe InDesign, we save and work in a file called an InDesign document that has a .indd extension. But there are a lot of other file types you can either save or export your work as, depending on your needs. In this video, you'll save a practice file and explore some of the different formats available when you save or export. To follow along, you can either open an InDesign file you have, or to open this practice file you downloaded for this tutorial, choose File, Open. In order to save a file, you can simply choose File, Save. In this case, you'll save this file with another name, essentially making a copy by choosing File, Save As. 
Saving a copy of a file is a great way to make a backup for yourself or even to save the state the document is currently in. So maybe you could go back to that point later on, for instance. Choose File, Save As. In the Save As dialog box that appears, you can choose a location to save the file and make sure that InDesign document is the chosen format. Change the file name, then click Save to save the file. At times, you may just want to send a visual of the artwork you're creating in InDesign. You can do this by exporting your document as a PDF. By choosing File, Export, you can choose Adobe PDF Print as the format and anyone with a free PDF reader can view it. You'll see a lot of other formats in this menu, like EPUB, which is typically used for electronic books or ebooks. You'll see PDF Interactive. That's a PDF that has interactive features like buttons, links, video, and more that are preserved in the PDF file, or maybe HTML for a website. You can press Escape to exit without exporting. Saving or exporting your files in Adobe InDesign is something we all need to do. Now that you understand how to save and some of the formats for exporting, you can save a copy of your files, maybe to create a version of the document while you're working on it, or even to save a copy of a file for storage. You can close this open file without saving by choosing File, Close. Let's take a tour of Adobe InDesign so you can become more familiar with the workspace and the tools available. With the latest version of InDesign CC Open, you can open your own document or this document from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial. So you can see everything on this page. Choose View, Fit Page and Window. With a file open in InDesign, you'll see the workspace. The workspace is made up of an open document in the document window, the menus at the top of the application, the application bar below the menus, the control panel below that, the tools panel on the left, and finally, docked panels on the right. As you explore InDesign, you'll find that you can arrange the workspace to have things you use all the time easily accessible or maybe to show more of the document you're working on and less of the tools and panels. In the Tools panel on the left, you'll see all of the tools you can use to create and edit content in your documents. Some of the tools have a little arrow in the corner, which means there are more tools you can choose from. For example, click and hold down on the Rectangle tool to see a menu of tools. Then click to select the Ellipse tool. Come back up to this Selection tool and click to select it. The selection tool is a tool you'll use a lot to do things like select and move content. Come out into the document and click to select this image. If you look in the control panel above the document, the control panel shows options for the content you select and the options change depending on what's selected. On the right, you'll see a series of collapsed panels in a dock. Panels are where you can work with pages, apply formatting like colors, and a whole lot more. Click the Pages icon or the text to open the Pages panel. The Pages panel is grouped with a few other panels that open as well. You can see their tabs here. If you click another panel, like Color, you'll collapse the previous group and open the new one. To collapse the Color group, click the Color Panel tab. If you find that you need more space in the Document window to work on your document, you can also drag the left edge of the dock to the right to collapse the panels further and give you more space. You can also click the arrows at the top of the dock panels to expand the panels or collapse them again. These docked panels and others are found in the window menu at the top of the screen. Any panel that has a check mark is open and currently showing. This is also where you'll find the tools and control panels as well. Let's open another panel. With the window menu showing, Click Text Wrap to open the Text Wrap panel. This panel is called Free Floating because it's not docked with the other panels on the right. You can move panels by dragging the title bar at the top or the panel tab. You can also dock one or more of the panels on the left or right side of the workspace. Drag the Text Wrap panel by the tab to the right, and when a blue highlight appears in the Pages panel group here, release the mouse. The Text Wrap panel is added to the group. Of course, as you start opening and closing and rearranging your panels, you may find you want to reset everything in order to reorganize and clean up the workspace. 
To do this, you can reset the workspace. Click Essentials in the application bar above the document and choose Reset Essentials to put all the panels back to their default locations. In this menu, if you see something else chosen, choose Essentials first and then choose Reset Essentials. After you reset this workspace, you may see that the CC Libraries panel is showing. You can click the CC Libraries panel tab to collapse it. Now that you're more familiar with the InDesign workspace, as you work more in InDesign, you can start to organize panels in a way that makes sense to you and your working style. You can close this practice file without saving by choosing File, Close.